Hi class, this brief video is going to be on both the Schneider article and the Childress et al. And I think both of these articles are relatively straightforward if you situate them correctly. And what I'd really like to do for this video is to then situate. Um, the Schneider article, it's called Mirror Mirror because the U.S. is looking at itself, uh, is an extension of some of the stuff that we were talking about in the Vaughn introduction. And so it talks a lot about how the U.S. ranks in terms of various healthcare metrics and things like that. Now, why am I including it with the Childress instead of with the Vaughn, I think is actually worth noting. Uh, notice the, for instance, Schneider talks a lot about the U.S. as the only developed country without unis universal health care. Uh, and that impacts the numbers, that impacts the health. But notice, that's about policy, right? That is not about the health care itself. That is about how we pay for the health care and things like that. And so it's ultimately, uh, because it's policy, it's going to fall into uh, what we call the public health sphere. And so it's an issue of public health rather than of health care. And we'll talk a little bit more about that distinction in a minute. Uh, just a couple of other things to pay attention to before I do the Schneider reading. One, uh, notice that Schneider very rightly points out that uh, no country is consistent in the front across the board. And so while you're reading through these metrics, uh, think in terms of, well, what is it that's most important or seems most important in healthcare to me? Uh, does the U.S. match that model or not? And uh, for instance, uh, two of the big issues that come up, uh, the U.S. is really, really bad in efficiency because uh, there's a lot of professionals and doctors arguing with insurance companies, and that just takes a whole lot of extra time and paperwork and uh, actually leads to health issues too because if somebody doesn't know whether a procedure is going to get covered or if it's a procedure that should have been covered but hasn't been, maybe the, maybe the, uh, maybe that financial dispute is actually preventing further care from happening, and so uh, that's a thing to pay attention to. That once again seems to be about public health rather than the healthcare itself, uh, and then similarly uh, another thing that. Schneider draws attention to is the U.S. is really good in doctor-patient relationships. So uh, hopefully you've never had anything major medical happen, but if you have, uh, you'll have an, you'll notice that most of the time you have an appointment just for the doctor to sit down and explain to you what the results show and stuff forward and things like that. Not every country has that. Uh, for instance, China they'll just, you go, you get your MRI or whatever it is, they give you the results. And if you want to look at the results yourself, that's up to you. If you want to make an appointment to have somebody read the results and interpret them for you, that's up to you. But it's not this automatic entailment. And so it increases efficiency, but at the cost of the doctor-patient relationship. And so uh, in general, what are, you know, let's just bring it together. The Schneider is going to talk about just how medicine is in the U.S., but pay attention to where that's healthcare and where it's public health, thing one. Thing two, you're going to be given a whole lot of facts. There's not a whole lot of, you know, he, Schneider's not trying to develop a thesis uh, so much as just give you what's there. And so what you have to do is when you're reading through this, think in terms of what is important to you, what should a country have. What should we be working on? What are we good with, et cetera? And you will notice uh, the first discussion board asks you to uh, summarize and make, and defend some of those claims. Uh, sorry, summarize the status of healthcare in the U.S. and defend a claim about, well, do I think it's good or bad or uh, why? So pay attention to those as you're going through the Schneider. That's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, obviously, this is not an exam-based course, so... I'm not going to test you on every little bit of minutia about where we're good, where we're bad, etc. But uh, you want to at least come away with an overall view. All right, so let's talk about the Childress and the public health sphere. And notice I've used this word a couple of times already. If you're 
not familiar, I want to make something very, very clear right now. Public health is not the same as medicine. They have a lot of overlap, but they are not identical. So uh, public health consists of, this is the children's definition, all the people and actions, including laws, policies, and practices, uh, and activities that have the primary purpose of protecting and improving public health. And so notice the net is cast a whole lot wider. So think in terms of uh, uh, school lunch diets. That's something that the government highly regulates, uh, depending on the state, more, <laughs> more regulation than others. Uh, but that's a public health issue. Uh, it's certainly not a medicine or health care issue. Or very similarly, exercise programs to fight childhood obesity and things like that. And of course, those kind of decisions weigh in on healthcare later, right? If we have a generation that has a whole lot of diabetes, as we're seeing now, uh, puts strain on the healthcare as a system, which of course then puts strain on uh, individual patient care. So the old claim that ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, but it doesn't just have to be pre uh, preventative stuff. So think of, um, you know, think of during COVID, uh, or, or, well, COVID's still going on, but think think of, uh, you know, 2020, 2021, uh, all the public health decisions that were, that were made to try to uh, mitigate uh, the uh, pandemic. Those are public health issues. They're policies, they're laws, they're practices. Uh, you don't get into the actual health care of COVID until you're in the hospital. Sorry, until you're looking in the hospital, not actually in the hospital. So public health is something slightly different. And it's always important to, to keep those two separate because, well, for instance, if it's about policy, uh, that's ultimately the kind of thing that is, you know, something developed through politicians and political science, and political theory. Uh, but still has these very important ramifications for medicine. And so when you're going through, I already hinted at, but when you're going through the Schneider article, for instance, watch which of those seem most directly related to medicine and the ones that look most directly related to public health systems. Because uh, you might be on the wrong target. You might, If you're complaining about U.S. health care and the, well, and the real issue there is the cost. Well, the cost is actually determined by policies rather than the quality of the health care. So uh, anyway, that's what a uh, public health system is in general. Uh, the second thing, the kind of the philosophical meat of the children's article, they talk about there's five justificatory conditions to determine whether somebody's liberties can be overridden. Uh, this is utterly standard, but of course became a big political thing during the pandemic. Um, so when is it okay for a government to override somebody's individual uh, liberties in or in favor of uh, public health? And Childress said, I'll say there's five conditions that must be met. So effectiveness, that is the policy actually works to do what it's supposed to do. Proportionality is an interesting one. It means the positives outweigh the negatives. Uh, necessity, that means the policy is needed in order to achieve uh, a public health goal. It must be the least infringement uh, necessary to achieve that goal. And then lastly, uh, needs a public justification. That is, it's communicated to the public why this happens. So. Uh, let's talk about mask mandates of various types. There were a lot of different types of mask mandates during COVID. Uh, so obviously a private enterprise can mandate whatever they want. But say, you know, uh, wearing masks on public transportation. So I live in the Cleveland area, so we have a lot of uh, rapid transit systems in that. Well, what would effectiveness mean there? means it actually works. Now we have to be careful. Because uh, I've mentioned before, but but policies are not aimed at perfection. Policies are aimed at improvement. And so the question is whether wearing masks reduces the spread of COVID, not prevents it completely. Uh, there is definitely some data that, that supports one and not the other. 
And so the masks seem to reduce the spread of COVID. <laughs> Proportionality. This is the one that led to some really odd arguments during 2020. Uh, well, do significantly fewer people dying outweigh a mild discomfort of an elastic band around your ears? I would think yes. Some people argued no, and, and that just confuses the heck out of me. Uh, but it does. The, the main real argument is that somehow it's taking away a liberty, but that's exactly what we're talking about. We are talking about times where it is justified that a government takes away a liberty in order uh, in favor of public health. If you say there's never such a time, uh, you probably shouldn't be in medicine, but, but it's also, it's a separate conversation. Go, go talk some political philosophy. So uh, take the political philosophy course if you're really interested in, if you, in, in those kind of claims. Um, necessity, yeah. Uh, what's the public health goal? Reducing the spread of COVID, especially in 2020, pre-vaccine, when we're talking about 6% of the people who get it dying. Sure. Um, least infringement. What's the least infringement mean? Uh, something like being able to achieve the goals without, uh, in, in the the least invasive way possible. So you could have theoretically made people wear like the full space helmet and respirators. That would be more infringement to reach the same goal. Uh, or you could, and here's the funny thing, you could require you know, some sort of social distancing and then three quarters of the, of the train is empty, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm not saying there were no other solutions, but that's what we're looking at is if, if this is the least infringement in order to uh, prevent this, uh, reduce the spread of COVID. And public justification. And this is the one that, pe that people failed on really badly, like really badly. Uh, the, during the, pan the 2020, 2021, they, they didn't message well because so many of these arguments said, wait a minute, a mask doesn't prevent me from getting COVID. Well, that's not actually the point of masks. The point of masks is prevent you from spreading COVID, right? The, the public messaging should have been, well, COVID is so dangerous because you're infectious up to five days before you're symptomatic. And so people didn't know they were having COVID and they were going around and breathing COVID out on everybody around them. A mask significantly, it, it, it reduces your chance of getting COVID a little, but it reduces your your uh, chance of spreading COVID a lot. Uh, but that was something that was kind of absent from the public justification because seems like approximately half the population didn't know that. And we're just talking about if I want to, I, 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 I'm put, I'm choosing to put myself at risk. You can't force me to make myself safe. Um, which of course the government can, but, um, uh, yeah, let me justify that for a second, but, 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 but it was, it was a failure in messaging. That masks were to prevent others, not the person, or sorry, to protect others, not the one wearing the mask. Now, why do I say the government can uh, sometimes force you to be safe? Uh, precedents, uh, think of seatbelt laws, and we're going to talk, and the reason I want to mention that now is all, uh, all I'm saying right now is it's legal for the government to force you to protect yourself in certain ways. That is established as policy, whether it's right or wrong, is something we're going to talk about uh, when we get to the paternalism section, so just watch for that later. Uh, anyway, the within the discussion of public justification by Childress, uh, they actually cite Daniels, who talks about what a good public justification should be. Uh, and again, this is stuff that kind of failed during the COVID messaging. And, and understandably, there was so much coming out during COVID and everybody was feeling terrible and angry and all sorts of other things. But uh, good messaging would have went a long way. And that's why <laughs> don't dismiss the messaging aspect of things because again, people are still bad about messaging in certain ways and don't seem to understand the fundamentals of some of the policies and procedures during COVID. But anyway, if those five conditions are met, it is usually considered permissible or correct for the government to over, uh, to over, overstep somebody's liberty and 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 it's worth mentioning like that's not categorical right you can't we're not saying suppress any liberty but 
Um, things like wearing on on my face what I want to seems to less important liberty than than say your right to life. Uh, so uh, we're just talking about overriding some liberties. And it, again, it is usually thought that if those five conditions are met, that's okay. I'm not saying that's not contentious, but if there's contention there, that's in political philosophy. Uh, it's not in the medical ethics class, so uh, just bear that in mind. If you want to talk about controversies here, talk about the ethical controversies, not the not the political philosophy controversies. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's you know we. Government suppresses a lot of liberties, uh, and I'm not saying that in the oogie boogie way. Uh, government suppresses my liberty to drive 60 miles an hour on my street. Uh, why does it do that? Because, and this is just a little bit of background for why, why it's usually considered okay, because my exercising my liberty to drive 60 miles an hour down the street threatens the liberties of others um, because I'm making them unsafe and I'm actually threatening their uh, right to life, actually, because I could kill somebody driving like that. I live on a little s suburban back road, so 60 miles an hour is definitely not appropriate. And that's, in general, that's what the government always does. So pause and let that sink in for a minute. Every law ever in the history of the United States suppresses some liberty, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know, the laws against murder are taking away one of my liberties. Um, it's doing so to protect other liberties. And so don't get too hung up on the liberty talk when I say, here's what we're talking about in suppressing liberties, because that's what laws do. That's all laws do, is suppress liberties. But why they suppress liberties is the important thing. To protect other people's liberties. And so, uh, well, if I, if I have to suppress a certain liberty in order to protect other people's right to life, uh, those are the kind of decisions that we're talking about. So, anyway, uh, I just don't want you to, again, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of rhetoric around the words liberty and freedom, but ultimately every law ever enacted is taking away a freedom in order to protect somebody else's. That's what laws do, and so that's all they're talking about here. They're not trying to, you know, to defend some weird police state or something. More generally, uh, the, the the five criteria they state should be seen as pretty darn uncontroversial. If you're going to overcome that, it's going to be a radical shift in how we think of government. But So that's kind of the background. Again, what you should be doing is trying to pay attention to um, the relationships between health and policy. That's important for this unit. But also make very sure you're separating uh, public health systems from actual health care uh, when you're thinking about these things. Otherwise, we will see you next time. And we're going to talk about whether healthcare is a right.